Good evening, you're watching the news from Bahrain Television. I'm Marie Claire. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace today the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Charity Educational Fund, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who presented to His Majesty the Fund's 2013-2014 annual report. The report outlines the Board of Trustees' tremendous efforts to gather resources in order to provide scholarships for students in need and to raise awareness of its noble goals and services dedicated to Bahraini society. His Majesty the King affirmed the fund reflects the nature of Bahrain's good, loving people and solidarity, confirming Bahrain's civil approach and care. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the fund's affiliates for their efforts in serving the country and gratitude to all who have contributed to increasing the fund's resources. His Majesty reinforced the fund's vital role, which embodies the value of cohesion through providing educational scholarships to Bahrainis to raise their higher education level in various fields. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Issa expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for donating a piece of land to the educational fund and pointed out that the fund was able to provide suitable scholarships to 16 and 20 students in its first and second year, respectively, in various fields including medicine, engineering, technology and business studies. His Majesty the King's personal representative for Charity and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth Affairs and President of the Bahrain Olympics Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, announced the joint organisation of the Dubai Triathlon Challenge in cooperation with the United Arab Emirates. The event will be held in Feb on February 27th of next year by the Family Challenge Institute and Dubai Sports Council and expected to attract over 1,000 athletes. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the aim is to spread awareness of the sport and encourage youth to take part. The event will be held under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and Dubai Crown Prince and President of Dubai Sports Council, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, expressed congratulations to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, and to, the, and to Her Royal Highness President of the Supreme Council of Women on the occasion of the Kingdom of Bahrain winning 17 chromatic medals in Pumse game and 16 chromatic medals in croquet for men and women. Winning first place and two cups in croquet and Pumse games for ladies as part of the fifth Gulf Taekwondo and first Pumse championship hosted in the Kingdom of Bahrain under the kind patronage of His Highness on the 7th to the 10th of November. His Highness Sheikh Khalid also conveyed congratulations and blessings to the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, considered Bahrain Martial Arts Association's prime supporter for his directives and support, which contributed greatly in the production of the championship. His Highness Sheikh Khalid said that the success of the championship adds to the Kingdom's record throughout the years for hosting external championships in the best way, stressing that persistent efforts undertaken by the Working Committee throughout the championship attest to their keenness for success, affirming the Kingdom's possession of excellent administrative staff. He praised the golden collection of medals won by the Taekwondo ladies, which also indicates the keenness of the Bahrain Martial Arts Association and attentiveness of sportswomen through its program of schedules, local activities throughout the year. Following the directives of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Housing Bassam Yaqub Al Hamar affirmed the construction of 40,000 new housing units in different provinces to be completed within six years. He also affirmed the Ministry had set plans in order to apply directives of His Majesty the King in providing housing units to citizens. During his visit to the work site in Hid, the Minister affirmed the commencement of construction in the first neighbourhood of the project, which contains 483 housing units at a cost of 18 million Bahraini dinars. He also said that the Ministry will offer tender for the construction of 398 housing units for the second neighbourhood before the end of the current month. 
The minister pointed out that the new housing units will be handed to citizens by the end of 2016 and noted that the ministry aims to provide the 500 residential plots to beneficiaries during the last quarter of the following year. The annual Gulf Electricity Conference and Exhibition GCC Power 2014 was opened this morning at the Gulf Hotel. By its patron, the Minister of State for Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, in the presence of senior regional and international officials. More in this report from Danielle Deporto. There was a large turnout this morning for the opening ceremony of GCC Power 2014 encompassing the 10th Seagray International Conference and 19th Exhibition for Electrical Equipment, held under the theme, Conserving Energy for the Future. The three-day conference and exhibition was organized by the GCC regional body of the International Council on Large Electric Systems, Seagray, with the support of Bahrain's Electricity and Water Authority, IWA, under the patronage of the Minister of State for Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, who delivered the event's opening speech in the presence of several senior officials. In Bahrain, uh, due to leadership guidance, we have now enough capacity of electricity to meet all the demands currently, but we have to plan for the future. So that's what we are doing here. This is a very important event for the electricity sector. And as you know, electricity is essential for all other sectors. No sector in Bahrain can operate without electricity. So when we look at the vision 2030 for the Kingdom of Bahrain, all the sectors are contributing, but all of them need the support of electricity. So therefore, this uh, conference and exhibition uh, will discuss the latest developments in the electricity sector. The exhibition features over 45 exhibitors, displaying the latest electronic devices and developments in the electricity and energy industry. Meanwhile, the conference will comprise a series of panel and technical discussions, highlighting the challenges facing the region's power sector and discussing the latest trends and strategies being experienced around the region and beyond. We have uh, received more than 120 technical papers and we have uh, accepted 50% of those technical papers and uh, they are all within the theme of conservation for, for the future. So they are on the smart grid and uh, on conservation in both buildings and in energy, in the increasing the efficiency. And it is uh, very important to see that 50% of those papers accepted are coming from this part of the, of the world. I truly believe that our true asset is not in the equipment we buy, nor in the technology that we can purchase from abroad. It's actually in the people, in the human capital. And if you see EWA, is 89% of our workforce is Bahrainis, which makes us very proud to see that 89% of Bahrainis are working in such technical field. The event is expected to attract more than 350 energy experts, all vying to network and gain access to the best products, knowledge and deals. Reporting from GCC Power 2014 at the Gulf Hotel Convention Centre for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. On the sidelines of the GCC Power event, the Minister of State for Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, gave an update on the work of the GCC Electricity Interconnection Authority. Electricity Interconnection was one of the most successful achievements of the GCC countries. Uh, this, uh, the first connection took place in 2009, July 2009, and if we take from that time until now, 1,100 uh, electricity incidents could have happened in these countries if there wasn't electricity interconnection. We are going to the second phase where we will expand the capacity. Also, we will be looking to trade electricity between the countries. So if a country has surplus electricity, they can sell it to a country which is in need at that time and vice versa. So this will provide a market because all the infrastructure, cables are already there under the sea everywhere. A renewable energy is a very important addition we are having now because Bahrain relies 100% on natural gas for electricity generation. 
we want to change the mix of the source instead of 100% being natural gas, hopefully in the future 10% of that is renewable. And already we have a pilot project working in Awali, which was done by an American company, Petrasolar, and we are looking now to do one in Electricity and Water Authority. It will be 3 megawatt solar, 2 megawatt wind. And this will be experimental. If it succeeds, it will be expanded in Bahrain. A World Health Organization, WHO delegation, started a three-day visit to Bahrain today to access the precautionary, to assess even the precautionary measures aimed at countering any potential outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus. Health Minister Sadiq bin Abdul Karim Al Shahabi said Bahrain is beefing up precautionary measures amid the alarming Ebola outbreak in West Africa. He stressed the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to ensure the safety of citizens and expatriates as well as visitors. The WHO delegation held a meeting today with health officials led by Under Secretary Dr. Aisha Mubarak Bonok. The session featured a presentation outlining the preventative measures which should be enforced in case an Ebola case is detected at Bahrain International Airport. The WHO experts will also evaluate the facilities of the ministry so as to bolster its readiness to prevent the epidemic from spreading to Bahrain and will submit their recommendations to the health minister. The reform project of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa heralded a new era in Bahrain and actively sought the participation of the people. More in this report from Esther Galoum. In 2001, His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa initiated the reform project within the framework of the National Action Charter, a vision that was overwhelmingly approved by 98.4% of the people. We started with 2001 with the National Access Charter, with a unanimity between the people on the 14th of Feb, 2001. And this proves till now that it is a solid ground for all Bahrainis to stand. In October 2002, the people of Bahrain went to the polls to elect the Council of Representatives and Municipal Councils. This gave the people direct influence on the lawmaking process and the services provided. Prior to Parliament, it was hard to hear what the people need to say. And members of Parliament has, have helped those ideas to come to surface. And uh, government today listens to Parliament members and tries to act upon it. We see a lot of uh, initiatives in different ministries where they had to change their strategies according to the people's wants and needs. Now, uh, all the um, uh, laws uh, and all the legislation um, and all the services provided to the people, uh, they uh, you know, came from coordination and cooperation between the you know, parliament, the government, the municipal council, from the people and from the uh, you know, uh, executive body. Development and the political process, however, are not static and constantly evolve. Sheikh Ali bin Ali is confident that Bahrain's people will meet the election challenge. I believe that the, the, um, the, the, the people are really willing to participate in, in the political process and in, in voting. It's a time it comes that, uh, to Bahrainis every four years. It's a time where you say this person will represent me in the parliament. Bahrain will hold elections on November the 22nd and officials across the kingdom are united in promoting the ballot box as the forum for the people of Bahrain to express their will for a better life and a better future. Well, I, first of all, I urge all nationals to take part in this historic event. Um, today is a time for action and their voice needs to be heard through Parliament. We must ensure that for us to succeed, every eligible voter 
must register his vote and must vote on 22nd of November. This is a must. If we need to change, if we want better life, if we have different opinions, our chance to change is through the ballot box. This is your duty to build your country and to participate in developing your country and your experience for your own kids, for your own future. 22nd of November is a key day. Sitting at home will not get us anywhere. Sitting at home will not elect the representative that the people of Bahrain uh, have aspiration to. Therefore, it is the duty and responsibility of every citizen that is eligible to vote to go and vote on 22nd of November. Because that way we will secure and ensure that we have responsible people and the right people that we have elected, that we have voted, representing us in the House of Parliament. This is Esther Galoom for Bahrain Television. Meanwhile, legislation and legal opinion chief in Bahrain 2014 elections, Executive Director Abdullah al Bainin highlighted the impact of democratic elections on Bahrain's development process, in line with His Majesty the King's reform project. From 2002 till now, the stability and uh, building the legal uh, infrastructure in Bahrain has ensure the all investors and all people there are uh, laws here in Bahrain if they want to invest they know their rights and know their duties so this reflects on Bahrain developments in various areas and giving Bahrain uh, credit to invest here in Bahrain. In 2005 uh, this uh, uh, political society law has been passed uh, at that time uh, giving those society to play more role in our political life. 